influencer. I uh, now have a studio that I work out of in Salon Republic in Beverly Hills on Wilshire. Um, it's nothing crazy. I'm not crazy successful yet, but it's an mm -hmm. awesome place to be. I really like being around people who are on a higher level than I am. So I feel like I can learn from them. I feel like I can just from seeing them and how they do their thing. I, it might not go along with what I do, but I just like being around like positive and like successful mm -hmm. hairdressers because that's how you become successful. You stick around people who are in a better you know situation than you are. So this Sunday is my first blow dry class that I'm going to be teaching, and I'm a little excited and a little scared all up in one, but I would love it if you guys would come and be a part. We're going to do lots of um, hands-on training, so it's a little different than doing demos, but I will have demos, we'll have free giveaways and things like that, and it's going to be awesome, so I want to just invite you guys all to come. Where is you guys have questions. Oh, it's going to be in Burbank at um, Sky Studios. It's a small studio. Um, and we're going to, it's at 11 o'clock. I'm trying to think of what else information. Sky Studios. Yeah, Sky Studios, 11 o'clock. You bring a model. You don't need to bring a kit, but I would suggest bringing a model that you're uncomfortable with. If you work on curly hair all day long, bring someone with straight hair. If you work on straight hair all day long, bring someone with curly, thick hair. The whole point of this class is to learn how to style all types of hair. Because one thing that I have noticed from being out of school is that there's a lot of people who only have one thing that they're good at, which is fine. But blowouts is universal as a hairdresser, I feel like. And anybody who sits in my chair, whether they're black, white, Asian, long hair, short hair, a lot of hair, not enough hair, I can do it. And I don't have a problem doing it. And I'm confident in doing it. And that just kind of happens with putting yourself out there. So I think it's really important as such a diverse group as yourself to be able to have a diverse clientele. And a lot of times in the higher end you know, salons, you would think the more expensive the service, okay, well then everybody should be able to go in and it's not the case. So what I would like to do is kind of share awareness to everyone to just kind of get everybody in the groove of being comfortable doing all types of hair. I think that if someone sits in my chair with curly hair and as soon as I'm shaky and, oh my gosh, you have so much hair, I've never seen this much hair before, and I, I didn't think she feels, she was like, okay, well, I came to you because I thought you were professional and that you know what you're doing, but now that you're making me feel uncomfortable, I feel like my hair is a problem, and it's not. I just think that we get conditioned to think that way, and I just want to kind of break that stigma that we have. You know what I mean? Yeah? No? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I feel like it just kind of happens over time. It's not something that you know people should be ashamed of. It's just the industry, that's just what you do. You do what you're good at. But I feel like if you have a class that's available, why not take it? Why not try to expand if you can? You know what I'm saying? So I feel free to ask any questions while I'm working, anything like that. I don't really like when people are like, well, save your questions to the end. It's like, what if I forget it in five seconds? Like I usually do. So um, please stop me whenever you have questions. I would be happy to answer them. We're gonna do a blowout. Do you guys usually do blow dries with the curls? Do you guys want to know a straight blowout? What do you guys want to? With curls. With curls. It's usually with curls. Yeah. I'm gonna challenge you. Yeah. Oh no! Come on. <laughs> come on. So okay. So the, my favorite brush is Ergo, which is the first blow dry class that I ever took, which was here because blow dries weren't even in our curriculum at the time. They weren't even in our book really. So we kind of fought for a better class because we want to actually know if every client that was coming in here would, wanted a blow dry and half of us didn't even know how to work a brush. I had never blow dried my own hair before. My mom was a hairdresser. So Ergo came in. They taught us a class. I still use the brushes to this day. Um, Ibiza brushes are my all-time fave. Um, but I, I use either or. Sometimes people who have thinner hair or who want fullness, I end up using a um, Ergo plastic. Yes, ergo brush. I end up using a brush that doesn't have bore because bore ends up smoothing it out a little too much. You know what I'm saying? So if somebody has flat hair and you smooth it out too much, it's kind of hard to create the volume with someone who doesn't have as much hair. So that's why I kind of make the difference. But the these kind of brushes are a lot easier to heat up and a lot easier to um, distribute the heat. So it makes for better curling and things like that. These you can still create curls, it's just you're going to work a little bit harder, which is fine. Yes? 
So sometimes when the hair is like really thin though, it just kind of moves to the brush like really quickly. Yeah. Like on the ergo. So like, how would you, I guess, prevent that? Um, I would or, say product for yeah, sure. Okay. Um, I try not to base like my classes or demos on product because I don't really want people to think that you need this product in order to do a good blow dry. But sometimes when people's hair is too slippery, I, I'll use like a mousse or something like that just to add a little grit to the hair. And um, I use like rollers and pin curls and stuff like that. And I think that um, popping the top, which is usually what I end up doing, kind of creating as much volume as I can on the top and then putting a roller in it. And that usually helps. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Cool. All right. So with, she's got wavy hair. So usually if somebody has like super curly hair, I guess. No, go ahead. The blow dry. What blow dry are you using? I use, I love Bioionic products. But this is Bioionic Power Light. It's super technically light, I guess. But I like, get my workout on from doing the blow dryer all day long. What's the on it? You know what? I'm not sure, but it is adjustable. It doesn't, I don't remember exactly the heat, but because I keep the blow dryer constantly moving, I never kind of rest. So I make sure we don't burn the hair or damage the hair in any type of way. But it is adjustable. It does have a, two different heat settings and then a cool setting. But I think if you look on bioionic.com, it has the actual like wattage and everything like that. Thank you. So, no problem. So, usually with someone with super curly hair, I would prefer to just go straight into the blow dry. Does anybody know why it's easier? Is it for that? No? Yeah, exactly. So, sometimes when, when we do the air drying situation, on curly hair, it's kind of like you're blowing out the cuticle before you can get it to fully smooth. So, someone with ethnic hair, super, super curly hair, I start in the back, it's soaking wet, but maybe not soaking. But it's fully wet. I would say 90% wet. Just to smooth out those curls a lot easier. Because it's always easier. Anybody have curly hair in here? It's easier to comb out your hair when it's wet. Same thing with the blow dryer. It's easier to get the blow dryer through when it's kind of soaking. She doesn't have super curly hair. So I'm going to air dry it 50% of the way. Since you guys want to learn curls. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the root is usually... The root is usually the first to dry, so you don't necessarily have to focus on the root if you want to make sure that you're air drying. Just kind of, I always kind of lift and crimp, I guess I'll call it, just to kind of make sure the airflow is going through. But sometimes if the roots are too dry, then you can't really get too much volume in it. So I try not to dry the roots completely. It's more of the ends that give us a longer drying time. Okay, so we're going to start with the top. size is the size of the brush so depending on what size I want my curls to be that's what size brush that I need. <coughs> so a bigger brush is obviously just going to give us a wave that like natural blowout look um, the medium I always do use medium on super long hair just because it's easier to control but a lot of times with people with medium length I just go with the smaller brush it seemed a little intimidating but section by section, creating those kind of curls, it's like that's pretty much a standard curl and iron size, pretty much. So to create the curls, I usually stick with the baby iron, uh, baby brush, but we're going to work with the mid-size since she's got a kind of hair. I did teach last time that I was here is where to start out in your blow dries. I mean, I kind of pick and choose now. I don't really pay attention to it as much as I should. But when in the beginning, when I was learning how to blow dry, the front is the most important because that's what the client sees. The client wants to know that you know exactly what you're doing. They want to know how confident you are. So you start in the front. You show them what you're working with. As soon as they see, okay, those are kind of cool, then they're calm relax you can kind of work and do what you're what you kind of want to do when you start off in the back and they can't really see it that's when they're touching and doing the most trying to make sure that you're doing what they want so usually I start right up top section and even if I'm doing pin curls a client can tell exactly how good you're gonna be usually immediately how you blow dry how you comb their hair through things that you say um, just how you approach it. So I always say fake it till you make it because it's, it, it's the truth. If you don't know, if you're not as confident, don't let the client know. Hi. Yeah. Uh, are you doing volume? 
Yes, so usually, it, thank you, usually with volume, I will start in the front, just like the over-directing that you guys teach with um, your roller setting. It's the same thing. I do the same thing with blow dries. So because her hair is super long, she's going to need almost more volume than normal just because it's going to hang from being so heavy. So I'm going to start in the top. I'm going to do a couple pin curls, and I'm going to just work my way around the front. And if you guys have questions, stop me if you need to. But I don't want to talk about it. So we're going to start at the base because that's where your volume will build first. So that's where we're going to start the drop. I'm going to show you guys. So the tension pop, the, am I hurting you? No, but I'm pulling really hard because it's just like, think of the tension as um, like ironing a shirt. When you iron a shirt, if it's all wrinkled and then you go to iron right over it, it's still going to be wrinkled. But if you pull the shirt, and you iron over it, that's when it smooths out, that's where you get the volume. So if we want volume to go forward, we're gonna pull forward. Tension without yanking it. And I never stop in one area. That's how you keep from burning the client. So I wanna make sure the blow dryer is constantly moving in a direction away from the scalp. And so as I'm pulling, I'm twisting a little bit too. You don't want to twist too much because you don't want to get the hair kind of caught in the brush, but just enough to kind of create that base of the curl, the top of the curl. And one way that you know <clears throat> that the hair is completely dry is the, the brush will easily go through the hair. If there's any moisture in the hair, even if you can't feel it, the brush will always kind of stop. Always. So that's a good way to tell if the hair, because sometimes when you do pin curls and there's volume involved, if you don't dry that hair all the way through, by the time you take that pin curl out, it's going to be full and um, frizzy. Not the kind of fullness that you want. to the end and making sure I wrap away from each other. I don't wrap the hair on top of each other. That's how you get the brush stuck. So away, away. Can everybody see okay? Yeah. See how it's kind of sticking? It's still wet. But notice in the root, it smooths out much easier because the root is drier than the end. And I'm always working in the direction where I want my curl to sit. So I'm never pulling the hair backwards because we want volume. So it's always going to be front. Okay. Yeah, I'm pulling, right? 
pretty much at the 90% mark where this section is almost 100% dry. So now I'm going to make sure that we're building our curl completely. It should already have a lot of volume from bending it in the roof. Sometimes the flyaways kind of make it hard for us to um, keep the brush from sticking. So I try not to worry about them so much. So at the end, that's when I kind of form them into the, into the brush. But it's okay if they're kind of doing their own thing for the most part. So in the end, when you want to take your, you want to take your hair out of the brush, the dismount is the most important. So if you take the hair out and you just pull the hair, it's going to go straight. And all that curl that we were trying to put in is going to slowly fade out. So what you have to make sure that you do is work your wrist, the flick of the wrist. <laughs> Some people like to do um, the brush where they kind of like leave it in the hair, which is totally fine. I usually don't because I end up um, getting them tangled in the, in the hair and I don't like looking like I don't know what I'm doing. So what I usually do is do pin curls all day long. So the dismount, if this is the way that, we're that we've been working the hair, then that's how you're going to release it from the brush. So as I'm releasing, I'm twisting and letting it out little by little. And then, boom, stop it. So, usually I wouldn't let it fall because that's kind of creates the hanging. And just like, um, what's this? Just like the example that I used last time was think of it as jewelry. Sometimes when jewelry is being made, it's heated up a lot, a lot, a lot, and then it's put in cold water to seal it. So, with curls, it's very similar. The hair is heated up so much, but if you let it cool straight, it's going to cool straight. But if you pin it, leave it in the curl, you know, cool in the curl. Especially with someone with super long hair because the hanging is really what cools it. So I like to keep it pinned so it's close to the head and it'll cool in this little cannoli situation we've got going on. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start with this section on the side. One thing I will say too about sectioning, make sure that your section is the same size of the brush. So the cool thing about Ergo is they're, they sell their brushes as like 20% bigger than normal brushes. So technically your sections can be 20% bigger, so your blow drives are 20% faster. So it just depends. So if you have a smaller brush, the, the section needs to be the same size. It's just, just so you can control the hair, you don't get overwhelmed, and the hair won't get stuck in the brush. It's the right amount of hair for the brush.
flowers. Sometimes if you try so hard to focus on those being stuck in the section, that's when you kind of get overwhelmed and they get stuck in the brush and things like that. So I don't, I try not to stress about it. I make sure that they're smooth. The hardest part about, um, I would say, ethnic hair or curly hair is their root section, the part that kind of stays frizzy no matter how big or small the brush. So what I make sure I do if someone has super curly hair is I will go against the grain or against our section and pull backwards just for that front area. So if we've got someone with, who doesn't necessarily want to put heat on their hair afterwards with a flat iron, that's totally fine. You take your brush, doesn't matter what size, you want to get that front hairline, you're always blowing away from the face so you never burn the client. Just like that. And if you still want to create volume, that's okay. You can still move forward. It's just you have to make sure that front area is smooth and straight. And the end. Does anybody ever get fishtails at the ends when they try to do the curls on the brush? Oh no? Oh, so y'all just pop it? Oh. <laughs> Well, I did a lot. So what I have to make sure that I do is I pull all the way through and make sure that the hair is tucked in, even if it's not 100% towards the end because I don't want to lose everything. I just make sure I'm blowing the hair under so that the hair is falling into place so it will constantly be curving to the brush. You don't chicken. Alright. I'll be here every step of the way. Don't worry about it. She knows what she's doing. Right. Okay, we're going to start with this section. I'm going to turn her to face you. Always make sure that your client is directly in front of you. You want to make sure that you're not standing off to the side. Or I know sometimes doing hair and makeup at the same time if you're doing events kind of have to work with the makeup artist, but always make sure that you're directly in front of what you're working on. Stop you right here is because now we're moving downwards, so the hair is going to go downwards. If that's how you want it to be, then that's totally fine. But don't forget, if we want volume in the front to go forward and out, we want to make sure that's how we're blow drying. So make sure we're going in this direction. Yeah, perfect.
a little more work, but not impossible. Just make sure you're heating it at every point of the brush so it's a little bit trickier. Okay, so let's see which way you've turned here. Okay, so see, it's coming this way. So we're going to twist this way. See what I mean? Because that's the way that we're going back. Yeah. Want to finish that? Mm -hmm. And sliding out as you're going along. Yes. That's it. You did it. And then pinning from the root. Two fingers. Yeah. I only do two. I mean, it depends on how, how big or small you want the pin curl. Two fingers is usually the standard cannoli size, so that's what I usually do. Perfect. So here we go. Let me just say this about pin curls. So you guys know how beach waves, when you twist the hair and wrap it around the curling iron, it creates that waved kind of effect. If that's not the kind of curl that we're trying to do, that is what's exactly going to happen if we twist it the same way it goes on a curling iron. So what we want to make sure that we do when we're doing pin curls is going smooth because that's how we want it to lay on the curling iron. So it's gonna be smooth all the way around. If we twist the hair as we pin, then it, we get that like beach wavy look that, you know, is totally cool if that's what you're going for. And make sure that we tuck the ends. So everything stays flat and smooth because how you pin it is how it will look when it comes out. Always remember that. Good job, babe. Keep a round of applause. <laughs> So still, the important parts here, the tippy top. Now when I last came here, I was all about the sectioning. You gotta make sure you section, section, and section. I don't really section anymore. I don't do it as much. Now when I'm doing curly ethnic hair, the more sections you have, the better. Because it keeps you organized and it keeps you from getting overwhelmed. So if you've got someone who comes in with a huge giant afro and they want smooth straight hair, it's totally fine. Put 18 sections in there. Very little sections, little by little. That's how you work towards getting the end result. For this, we kind of are still letting her air dry, so we don't mind that it's hanging low. But for super curly hair, I always like to make sure that my sectioning is A1 because it keeps me from getting overwhelmed because the clients can definitely tell when you're overwhelmed, even if you're not saying anything, just from your body language and how you move through the hair. Okay, so here we go. Section is the same size as my brush. Well, I guess we could take it over here. Cool. Upwards for volume. Forward. So as I'm pulling, even though I'm pulling straight, I'm making sure that the brush is constantly moving. Twisting as I So dropped, and moving forward. Twist, twist. You don't have to move at the speed of light, but the faster you go, the less heat you have to continually put on the hair. Because we're not trying to reheat re re pieces that were already hot. So, you know, work on getting your speed.
this have to go over your work. Constantly keep the feet moving so you're not burning your hair. Still warming the root, making sure everything is flat and smooth. See how it's all laying? There's no twists and tuck. So after the top, I mean, I always feel like the top and the blow dry is the most important part. A, because that's where your client sees first, and B, that's where all the volume is held. Sometimes doing pin curls in the back of the head is just like time consuming and ends up taking a lot of time. So from this point, I'll start in the back. Because the back is what hangs low. So it's it's you know not you're not gonna get much volume from under here. So I want to make sure brushing out here you guys already know start from the ends work your way up to the root that works on every single type of hair that I work on. Anybody comes in with tangles doesn't matter if it's afro if it's straight Working away from the ends to the root is always the way to go. Starting from the root is just painful. All right, so we're gonna clip her up away from my sections. And making sure none of this wet hair touches our dry pin curls because that would be, you know, a waste of all these precious pin curls. So usually I would probably just take this whole section if I was just gonna do it straight but I can kind of pop it. Now with the abuser brushes it's a lot trickier as far as like the tangle factor gets so just keep that in mind. I still haven't like you know got it perfect 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 down. But I can work down over here because the hair is gonna fall in that direction. But if you wanted to pin curl the whole head, why not? You totally could. So if you're gonna work upwards then work upward. If you still want to create the volume leave it at the back Go ahead and do it. There's no right or wrong. So twist up. And when I'm placing the hair, I'm not placing it on top of each other. That's how I get tangled. I place it next to each other so it can move freely throughout the brush. in the hair. I usually use the Ibiza. I just want to press and make it too hard. That's when the brush gets stuck. So when releasing, it's the same way. Twist out. And sometimes you can tug at the scalp a little too much if the hair is inside. So I would hold in the middle. You guys see? And keep twisting. Same way. So, so if we're going to try to create smooth, we always want to do the opposite thing. So volume up, smooth down. And you can still lock it the same way. So if you want to create a straight, straight and it can still be locked to get that natural flow.
section. So the girl who taught me how to blow dry at the blow dry bar um, strongly suggests that I use way bigger sections because that's how you get a blow dry done in 35 minutes or whatever we were doing, whatever crazy amount of time. And I hated it. I hated using big sections because I felt like hair was all over the place and I was like this big blob and I didn't really know how to work with it. But I will say, the bigger the section, the faster it goes. And if you can control the hair, that would be the goal, in my opinion, if you can, to get clients in and out of the door. So we want to make sure that hair isn't touching on. Freshly pressed. The low volume curls, which is going to be in the back, hair moves down, but we're still focusing on the root. Because just like we said before, if a blow dry is not dry at the root, one, the client will immediately know as soon as they walk outside and that air hits their scalp, it's a wrap. <laughs> so we're still focusing on the root, even if it's not going to be all the volume. still walking just the opposite way downward and as the brush moves the blow dryer moves the blow dryer is never at one spot longer than uh, half a second and the reason why I go on the top and on the bottom is because you notice the flyaways kind of peek out when you're blowing all the air that way the flyaways will be, it's the foundation of fringe so just make sure that when you're blowing downward, you're controlling those flyways. Let them feel free, guys. Just make sure you show them the box. You know what I'm saying? Still locked in. You'll even see as I finish the blowout, as it hangs, it's going to droop little by little because we're letting it hang. So if that's the look that we're going for, by all means, do your thing. Intersections away. Anybody else want to come up and try? Um, um, So when you guys do beach waves, do you guys just use a curling iron or do you guys use a flat iron or what do you, what do you guys use? Both? A wand? Okay. So I'll show you guys how I uh, 
do my beach weight. I, I like to do my beach weights with a flat iron only because I feel like the curl of lats and a lot of my ethnic clients or curly girls weren't able to, their, their, their waves weren't lasting because the curling iron was like smoothing their hair out too much. So the flat iron is almost like straightening and curling at the same time. Some weird black magic stuff, but I'll show you. So when you have the blow dryer, we're going to place the nozzle here and move upward. That way we keep the flyaways to a minimum. Because sometimes when we point straight down, they all come out right here, and that's when they get caught in the brush. A little bit is okay, but all, no. So we're going to lock it in again. And then place the blow dryer. I 
I was just going to say, we're going to start right now. So once you pull up, this will be the last time. Yeah, pull up. So the ends are pretty much close to getting dry, so that's when we start wrapping. So we're going to release. And walk. Yes. Not on the way. Just one. And then underneath. We'll go right here. And travel up. If it gives you too much pullback, you don't want to rip the hair, you know, we'll always remember the client. So if it gives you too much pullback, then take it out, go again. If it's too much that we're tension, then it's no good. We don't want our client to know that we're, you know, yeah. Why are you struggling, girl? You got it. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But when you release it, Stand right in front of your, your opponent. Okay. Which way? That's the hand you usually do? Okay, perfect. So we're going to make sure we work upward. Okay? Always upward. Sorry. I keep beating everybody up. Perfect. And let's make sure. There you go. What do they have to do? So the, we want to make sure that we're going with the, um, so instead of blowing down, we're going to blow in the same direction. So when you have the blow dryer, we're going to place the nozzle here and move upward. That way we keep the flyaways to a minimum. Because sometimes when we point straight down, they all come out right here and that's when they get caught in the brush. A little bit is okay, but all, no. So we're going to lock it in again and then place the blow dryer. Yes. Yes. Stays smooth just like the cannoli when we do the pin curls. So as soon just pull straight up. Straight up. See what I mean? Because when we start to lock it on top, that's when it gets too tangled. So next to each other and straight up. Got it? 
Yeah, twisting it multiple times, that's when you're kind of like locking it in, which usually I do, but at the end when you're leaving the brush in. So I wouldn't twist a few times. If you can and it doesn't get tangled, but I just don't because I can't control that much air when that many times twisted around the brush. Right? Yeah. Yes. You got it. Yeah, keep it flat. And so we're going to put the heat here, right here. So I'm placing it here. See, I think what's happening is you're blowing from here and it blows the hair to cross over. And that's when it will get tangled and then you want to be, you know, we'll kind of walk underneath. So to make sure we're twisting here, control upward. And then you get to the ends and see those little ends? That's when we start twisting down. And if we need to dismount, wow. So I think that's what it was. I think it, you just have to make sure the air is blowing exactly where you want it to. You start from over here, you're pushing that, the wrong, that's not where you want to place it. The heat is always going to be in this little nook. That's where the heat is. The, the ends will automatically get hit the more you pull upwards. Can try one more time? Now here come the flyways. So that's when we kind of work on top to keep pushing the hair this way and moving over. See how it's kind of pushing these down? So now stop. That's when that walk happens. So turn down, keep, let's put some on top. We're trying to control these little hairs now. So underneath, yes. Twist on top. You have to watch the hair and how it moves. So if you're blowing the air this way, see where the hair is going. And since it's blowing that direction, now I'm gonna, okay, push upward. Now all this is out here. So now we're gonna come this direction and do it forward, and then down, and then under. And then forward, and then down, and then under. So we're just pushing everything exactly where you already have it. Wow. So you wanna twist out? No? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you unravel like that all the way down, it kind of takes away the shape of the curl. You got it. Start from the root. Pin curl, we're gonna start from the root. Mm -hmm. Don't twist, yeah, flat. Perfect. And make sure those ends. Yes, you did it. Awesome, you. you're welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now the hair is pretty much way more dry than what we started. So now we gotta move quick. Or if you didn't wanna move quick and wanna keep taking your time, let the section back down. Sometimes these bristles are really, um, they're really hard and they can...
sideways, which works just the same. You just have to make sure you can control the hair and move it the way you want it to go. So instead of pulling up like I usually do, a lot of people do side, which is ideal because sometimes when you um, are using a curling iron, you curl from the side anyway. And make sure the hair is constantly smooth. Starting in the side is kind of like starting the curl from the root and moving little by little that way. It's a lot harder to do a longer hair, but not impossible. her on was she was blowing straight through instead of angling it. It makes a big difference. See all those little guys? I usually don't have that problem if I'm going with the hair. None. With it. The second you start blowing straight directly through is when all that hair starts to come out. And it creates a tangle.
brush are moving a lot smoother through the hair because it's already dry. There's no sticking and stopping. Which is how you know that the curl process kind of has to start or else you're going to be causing damage to the hair. So again, pushing those flyaways exactly where we want them to go. So some people like to do a cool shot. That's totally fine because we've kind of taken a long time. <clears throat> the hair everywhere else has kind of had a chance to cool down. So it's just this little guy. Ooh, ah. <laughs> and some people like to spray before um, they curl. It's totally fine. It's up to the stylist and your preference. It just depends on the event, how I pick. Just because if they don't need it to stay for you know six days, I don't have to spray it too much. But I try to use as little product as possible just because I don't want to weigh down the hair. This guy's a little... So for every single one of my clients, doesn't matter what race, ethnicity, anything, I always flat iron the hairline just because that's the first place to go when we sweat, dance, work out, anything. It doesn't matter who you are, that's always the first place to go. We put makeup on that part of our face and we wash the makeup off. So if I flat iron it, it ensures that just a little bit more um, what do you call it? insurance. So this is also Bioionic. I like flat irons that are adjustable because not everybody needs the same amount of heat. Um, I never am on 450, which is how high as it goes. The highest I will go is 440. And um, what else? What else? It vibrates. I still haven't figured out what that 
does. Mm -hmm. I don't think it does much of anything, but it does vibrate. It's supposed to help like with smoothing out the hair, but I kind of turned that part off because it's kind of a whole bunch of, you know, riffraff. So to stay away from the, turn the to the side. You don't want to burn the client, first and foremost. So tension is always important. So this is a very thin section, so I don't need to rest or anything like that. Pull tight, tight enough to not hurt the client, but so that you can see the skin lifting. So you could see that would be what you burn if you get too close. So you want to be able to see that. Don't worry, I haven't burned anymore. Make sure it's smooth. Same here. Pull, not too much, but just enough so you can see where the hair is coming from. And to rest. You could do it over here too. Turn to the side. That little like kink we got in there. Pull. And it's important to know your tools too. So I know that this flat iron, if I stick it in like a iron thing, it's gonna heat up the whole flat iron, even if the outside isn't supposed to get hot. So I know that if it's been sitting inside of something and then I go to use it on my client, I have to make sure that this is not touching my client. If it's been sitting out on a towel or my SMA, I know that I can get pretty close without burning because I know that this part hasn't had a chance to heat up but it just depends on what tools you use and you have to make sure that you learn on yourself first or your friends who trust you to you know let them experiment a little bit but i just make sure that i know for sure what my irons and everything do so we can make sure that we're protecting the fire so your head back so i like to fluff at the root and not pull out too much Which way do you usually? Uh, down the middle, usually. Okay. So what I'm going to do is show you guys my favorite beach wave really quick. Oof. Wow. Boom. So right now I'm on 400. That's about as hot as you really need. You don't need to do any more than that on someone who doesn't need a lot of heat. So I go in sections the long way. I try not to go across unless you're doing those, um, what do you call it? Those glam waves where everything kind of falls into one section. Then I make sure my sections are horizontal. But when I'm doing beach waves and I want them to be elongated, I make sure I'm going vertical. I'm going to take my section, my very long section. I'm going to start at the root. Sorry. Start at the root and twist. And move downward. You never want to rest in one spot because you don't want to burn the hair. So you want to keep the heat constantly moving. So what I usually do is I curl in opposite directions if I want it to stay messy and, you know, airy and things like that. If I curl in the same direction, they melt together. You know what I mean? Where after a while, the curls kind of look like one big curl. So when you curl them in opposite directions, they fight against each other and they stay separated. So because that one I did backwards, actually, I'm going to do all the front ones backwards so she can have that very faucet teeth. Moving fast, but consistent all the way around. I kind of stick with Charlie, but I mean, you can't be universal. 